And finally tonight, the head of a new consumer protection agency is in place, but the challenge to the mission and the man continues. News Hour Economics correspondent Paul Salman has the story, part of his ongoing reporting on making sense of financial news. Today, I'm appointing Richard as America's consumer watchdog. Richard is Richard Cordray, perhaps the most controversial recess appointment in recent memory. After a long procedural battle with the Senate, the president made Cordray head of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau on January 4th. When Congress refuses to act, and as a result, hurts our economy and puts our people at risk, then I have an obligation as president to do what I can without them. GOP lawmakers cried foul, claiming that the Senate was open for business and wasn't on recess, even if no business took place. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell pronounced the move unprecedented, claimed the president had arrogantly circumvented the American people. House Speaker John Boehner's reaction? This action goes beyond the president's authority, and I expect the courts will find the appointment to be illegitimate. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau was created under the 2010 Dodd-Frank financial reform law. The argument for it, that it will promote fairness and transparency in consumer lending like mortgages and credit cards. The argument against, as an independent bureau funded through the Federal Reserve, it has too much power. The Before Senate Banking spend, Committee's Richard Shelby. This massive new bureaucracy was designed by the drafters of Dodd-Frank to be virtually unaccountable to the American people. The struggle preceded Cordray's appointment. Harvard law professor Elizabeth Warren set up the bureau as a special advisor after it became clear she would never be confirmed by the Senate. She was opposed by business, but backed by consumer advocates who produced a rap video on her behalf. Republicans, meanwhile, distrusted the Bureau, as seen in this confrontation with North Carolina's Patrick McHenry about how long Warren would appear at his hearing. Congressman, we had an agreement. You had no agreement. We had an agreement for the time this hearing would occur. You're making this you up, You asked it. Oh, Since a Warren nomination seemed a non-starter, President Obama tapped Cordray, a former tough-on-crime attorney general of Ohio, who was already the Bureau's head of enforcement. But in a letter to the president, Republicans had threatened to withhold support for anyone insisting a bipartisan board run the Bureau, not an individual. Minority Leader McConnell. And it's one individual who could bring down the banking system in this country if he chose to. He says unlimited power. As Ohio's Attorney General, Cordray made his name as a consumer activist hounding financial firms that had misled investors, probing foreclosure practices. This is Jeopardy! Decades before that, he had his first brush with successful celebrity. A judicial clerk from Grove City, Ohio, Richard Cordray. A five-day Jeopardy! champion at age 27, Cordray was already aggressive. I'll bet 1,000. Betting big, for instance, on his knowledge of the Bible. Ecclesiastes says, a man hath no better thing under the sun than to do these three hedonistic things. You'll learn how he responded in a bit. But 25 years after that first moment in the sun, we met with Cordray to ask the former law professor the questions of the hour. Starting with, is his appointment legal? This is a valid appointment. The law is pretty clear on that. Uh, the important thing is we needed a director in order to be able to fulfill the promise to the American people that Congress made. We're here now to stand on their side, to protect them against fraud, to see that they're treated fairly in these markets. I don't think there really should be anything controversial about that. And I think to the American people, there isn't anything controversial about that. Republicans say the Consumer Finance Protection Bureau lacks congressional oversight, has too much power. Legitimate concerns? I have committed to leaders on both sides of the aisle in both chambers that we will provide them with the information and input that they need to feel comfortable, that they understand what the Bureau is doing and why. Uh, I think that that's the kind of oversight that is called for, and I'm committed to doing it. Cordray and his agency are already at work. One effort, know before you owe a campaign to make credit card agreements and mortgage disclosures simpler. 
part of that is boiling down the fine print, clarifying the choices and making, making the most important terms very clear to consumers. Any kind of business model that's based on consumer confusion so that people don't really know what they're getting into or they're confused about the terms or the terms are going to shift and change over time, that's of concern to us. For that reason, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau will examine so-called non-bank firms that till now have mostly escaped federal oversight. Payday lenders, student lenders, and a primary target, mortgage lenders, largely to blame for the financial crisis, he says. Huge part of the problem was that some people were regulated, others weren't. That led a race to the bottom. Uh. People had, were, had financial incentive to sacrifice any kind of standards and principles, and enforcement was weak. There's no doubt about that. That was part of the problem. You've said there are going to be real consequences to breaking the law, that is, this law. Like what? Prison? Uh, we do not have criminal authority, although we can make referrals to the Department of Justice, but we can take them to court and into administrative proceedings in order to enforce the law if we can't otherwise correct the problems. Aren't regulators always playing a game of cat and mouse? I mean, how, how do you get around that as a regulator? How do you keep up? It's amazing how creative people can be about avoiding and violating the law. I used to say about frauds and scams that I saw when I was Ohio Attorney General that if these people would just put this kind of energy into starting a legitimate small business, we could really get somewhere with our economy. But many of them prefer the easy way, and that's where enforcement is necessary to ward them off from taking that path. You think you're going to channel them into more socially useful uh uh, enterprises? I'm very optimistic. Hope <laughs> springs eternal. Okay, finally, from your actual week on Jeopardy 25 years ago, one of the many you got right, though I'm not sure the answer applies to your new job. Ecclesiastes says a man has no better thing under the sun than to do these three hedonistic things. Eat, drink, and be merry, but be careful how you pay for it. Those last words aren't in scripture, but they are the key to Cordray's No Before You Owe mission slated for scrutiny tomorrow when he faces a House oversight hearing chaired by Representative Patrick McHenry, the same congressman who tussled with Elizabeth Warren last May.